Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and welcome to the Car Design Web Seminar. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode and there will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation using questions submitted through the Q&A feature. If you wish to ask a question at any time during the presentation, simply click on the Q&A panel in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, type your question into the dialog box, and click the Send button. If you happen to be in the full screen view, you will see a question mark icon on the toolbar in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. When you select the question mark icon, it will open the Q&A panel on your screen only. We do ask that you please address your questions to all panelists. This is the default setting, and your questions will be visible to all of the presenters, but will not be visible to other participants. We will attempt to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. However, if we are unable to get to your question, we will follow up after the event. As a reminder, today's session is being recorded for replay purposes. And with that, I would like to introduce your first speaker for today, Paula Hilditch. Paula, please go ahead. Thank you, John. Um, so welcome to uh, the first webinar for the Pilkington Vehicle Design Awards at the Royal College of Arts in London. Uh, today we're going to be announcing and introducing this year's winners, and they'll be giving a brief overview of their designs, and then we'd welcome any questions. Just to uh, start, I'd like to give you a brief background to Pilkington and our, our judges. Uh, Pilkington was founded in 1826 in St. Helens in the UK and has a long heritage in glass manufacture. In June 2006, Pilkington became a member of the NSG Group, who is a major Japanese glass manufacturer, founded in 1918 in Osaka. NSG and Pilkington have technical collaborations since the 1980s, and the merger of the two groups has resulted in a global-wide organization incorporating businesses supplying glass for buildings, for vehicles and for specialty applications. Today, the Pilkington Automotive business is a supplier to all major vehicle manufacturers, and glass is used as a key vehicle component and styling feature. Okay, this year uh, is the 23rd consecutive year of the awards, and um, there are two awards which are based on the student's final year projects. And these are awarded to students with the best overall design concept and also for the best use of glazing. There are additionally two commendations. The awards were initiated um, by Pil with Pilkington because we recognized how integral glass and glazing is to the vehicle design and the aim was to forge closer links with vehicle designers. Through these links, we sought to work closely to match the ambition of the designer to the practical limits of glass manufacturer, with a view to bringing the most exciting designs to the market. Today, we're fortunate to have three vehicle stylists as judges for this year's awards, all of whom have graduated in the past from the RCA. Our first judge, David Wilkie, has worked for Ford Gear and uh, was also di design director for Stile Bertone uh, before joining Gurat Murat in 2008 to work on electric commuter vehicle. Since then, he's established his own design studio, David Wilkie Design, based in Turin in Italy. Earl Beckles is a winner, former winner of the Vehicle Design Award and is currently a designer at Land Rover and was responsible for the exterior interne, interior styling of the Freelander 2. I'm sorry, I'm having a slight delay with my slides here. And finally, we have Raquel Aparicio, who graduated from the RCA in 2008 and was awarded a commendation for her vehicle design, which was a soft vehicle concept, and has since worked in Kia and is now a freelance designer working in Spain. Okay, without further ado, I would like to uh, hand over now to um, my fellow judges who will help to announce the winners for 2010. Please let me hand over to David Wilkie first. Hello. Um, 
for me, it, it's very much a pleasure to be involved in this webinar, involved with Silkington and the RCA, of course, after graduating many years ago. Um, and it's been a great year again with some really, really good concepts, um, really worthwhile and stimulating for me as a designer uh, to go back to Italy and to go back and work with my projects and, and, and come back with more emotion than when I arrived here um, yesterday evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to say the, the prize or the, for the overall best design uh, goes to Martin Walgren for his The Grid design. Uh, we felt this was, was a, a wonderful design overall, basically as it, uh, it moves design on. It, it also moves on car design, mobility, and it's looking to how probably cars could be in the future. So it's, it's a bit of good design. It's a bit of good styling because cars still should look good. They should still be passionate. They should still have wonderful shapes and forms, but they must have new meaning and they must stimulate uh, designers like myself to, to want to move and push car design into the future. So I think overall, uh, our judges, we, we reckon this was a great, uh, great uh, project that should be worthwhile of the overall design board. Now I'd like to just uh, maybe pass you on to Earl Beckles, and Earl will let you uh, bring you up to date with the next prize. The next prize um, was awarded for the best use of glazing, and this award went to David Seasing. He had a very innovative approach to tackling environmental issues and sustainability, using how architects respond to that um, as an analogy and approaching it in like manner. So he created a vehicle which used um, double glazing as a conduit to allow air to flow through uh, to generate uh, and store energy in the vehicle. And uh, the interesting thing about the vehicle he did was that it inter interfaced with a, a house design structure as well, and the two worked hand in hand to um, regenerate energy and use it more efficiently and effectively. Um, it's a very, very pleasant, uh, interesting and, and clean design which housed a lot of innovation in terms of approaching uh, sustainability and um, translating architect architectural metaphors in a bit of automotive design. So we, as, as a panel of judges, we're very impressed with this, and it was um, almost certainly a, a clear winner in, in respect to the best use of glass. Uh, we also had um, two commendations, uh, which were awarded to um, Mika Heikkinen for the best use of glass, and also for Dalibor Pantacek for his best overall design interpretation commendation. So. We're now going to hand over to uh, David Seasing uh, to say a few words about his design. David. Um, hello. Um, my design is basically being kicked off by my personal interest into architecture and by the chance to work together hand in hand with the architects at Roger Stirk Harbour and Partners who've been giving uh, feedback and testing the feasibility of my thinking. And the basic idea is it's translating their architecture thinking of having a building with a building envelope, a supportive structure and a service core, translating that into a car design which has um, an external skin, a supportive structural frame and then a service core in the middle making the vehicle a multi-layered system using the air between the layers in, a, uh, in a different ways. Um, the main uh, way the AI is used is basically that um, the air intakes in the front and rear of the car can be closed down to use waste heat from the, in from the engines and the battery rising into the shell of the car to heat the, heat the car up. And when the air intakes open up, the air starts flowing through the car, cooling the vehicle down, automatically adjusting the climate of the, of the, um, of the vehicle. Um, connecting this design to a house, I'm using a technology um, 
which is researched by Airbus and based on piezo electronic crystals applied to the surface of the frame, which uh, generates energy through the crystals being put into vibration by the air stream through the car. Um, and connected to the house, the house creates a natural air stream using the chimney effect um, by the rising hot air in the building, um, which then is a constant air stream pulled through the vehicle um, that the vehicle even keeps creating energy while parked outside the house. Doing so, both parts of the symbiosis um, have a constant energy connection where energy can be transferred to the most demanding part. They keep charging each other, and if the concept generates plus energy, it's fed back into the public grid to benefit the user through uh, discount on taxation. Thank you, David. Okay, I'd now like to pass over to Martin Walgren to explain a little bit about his concept, the grid. Hello. Uh, my concept is called the grid, and before this concept, uh, project started, I created a brief for myself, which was how can a car benefit by having a more dynamic shape? And uh, if one look at car sharing systems today, they are very great, have really good ideas behind them, but they do lack uh, some sort of flexibility for the user such as returning the vehicle. I also looked into autonom autonomous vehicles. Uh, will that ever see the day of light? We, we have seen it since the 50s. It's almost like the flying car. And, uh, but I, we see tendencies today that it will come true. And um, I apply this to a car sharing system. And then also, how will the architecture of the vehicle itself uh, change when you remove the humans and uh, move engines and techni some technical technicalities to the wheels? And, um, so within the grid, I have several of vehicles, and uh, one vehicle I decided to uh, design a bit further for this concept, for this project, and that, that one is called the commuter, or commuter, and it's a two-seater. And this one is basically uh, focusing on aerodynamics, how can it be as efficient as possible. So when no one is inside, you obviously need a flat, as flat as possible, and, uh, and when you need to sit in the vehicle, uh, you need to have enough space for humans to fit in and use the vehicle as a normal transportation. And uh, when the car is charge, uh, charging, it connects to other cars which are parked along the road. So basically what I like to call it community charging is uh, if you connect your car to other cars who have been parked and they're fully charged, you use not only your solar panels on top of your, your own vehicle, you, know, you, know, you use all the other cars connected to, these, uh, to your own car. So you, all of a sudden you have a big area of solar, solar panels so you can charge a lot faster. And uh, the form language is inspired by a Swedish artist and uh, how she can freely uh, design uh, cer ceramic sculptures. And that, that's the freedom that I think, uh, beyond, thanks to new technologies, we can use this freedom a lot more in, in automotive design. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Okay, we're, we're now going to open the floor up for some, some questions. Okay, I've got... I have a question uh, for for Martin about his design. Um, how much energy do you see uh, possible for generating and putting back to the the grid by the use of these vehicles? That's a uh, quite difficult question to answer since it's a, a quest is a concept for year 2025. But if you look at uh, there, are, there are solar taxis in Berlin, for example, and uh, they, they, uh, they need a day to charge themselves. And then you look into how much money is spent into uh, developing uh, solar panels today. It's the fastest growing energy source, and so you can, surely you can divide this, uh, this time and uh, get a pretty quick time uh, in the future. That's my best answer. Thank you, Martin. Uh, we have another Another question for, for David. The uh, question is, how, how do you see this, uh, your design, uh, being affordable for uh, many families? 
Um, obviously, most of the technologies I am using are in research and applied in a very small scale so far. So put to production now or as soon as possible be quite ex expensive product. But um, I think in future with, with these technologies becoming more common uh, of common use, it's going to be a much cheaper a cheaper product and um, the concept is rethinking ownership models at the same time, making the vehicle more affordable for people. So it's meant to come with the house itself, so you're not owning the car yourself, but when you're renting into one of these buildings, the use of the car comes with the house and um, you're only paying when you actually use the car and use energy from the system. I've got a question for David now. Um, what uh, what are you looking for when you come to the RCA? What is the what is the inspiration behind uh, what you're looking for? Yes, that's a, I guess that's a very good question. Um, I think I'm in one sense I'm looking for the unexpected. I'm looking for things that I've never really seen before. I'm looking for. Uh, signposts that will kind of shake me up and and, and make me think, wow, that, I, I'd never really thought of that. I'd never seen this. Um, I, I'm looking for stuff that I wish I'd done myself or I wish I could have done. Uh, many of the young kids and young students nowadays have uh, a grasp on technology, have a grasp on, on, on what's happening and what's going to happen in the future um, that that I need to be as, a, as an experienced designer in touch with. So when I come to the RCA, I think my biggest thing is to be, to be impressed and, and to be stimulated by, by fresh ideas. And also as a traditional maybe designer who's been in the business for quite a few years now, I really want to see things that would help to change the car design world because the car design world is the most traditional, the most slow changing part of design that I, that I, that I believe exists. And we do need fresh ideas and young students work to push this ahead because otherwise we'll just create in another 50 years, we'll be refining the manual handbrake, we'll be fine, refining the gear shifter, and we need to move away from that. So that's what I come to see, fresh concepts. The RCA is all about conceptual design and not about styling tomorrow's car. We, we, you know, we do too much styling of tomorrow's car, so we come here for concepts. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, I have another question here um, to both students. How do you think the uh, Pilkington Awards uh, play a role in, in the core? that you've just finished. I think it's, uh, Martin speaking, I think it uh, has a big impact. Uh, most people in the industry know about uh, the award and it's uh, a great recognition to get. And uh, both me and David are out looking for a job and I think it could help us a great way on the way. Um, and I think it's not only the award itself. Within the course in the last two years we've been working closely together with Pickington and, and had a several several presentations throughout the course, um, working hand in hand and giving us feedback on the use of glass and latest technologies and uh, development in the use of glass and automotive glazing, which is uh, first and a very important information we can use in our designs. Thank you. Uh, I have another question for Martin here. Uh, the question is, how could you get around the future issue of low materials resources and what type of battery or power source are the solar panels charging? Uh, I guess it's battery, you can look into it. It's, it's a sort of a futuristic concept that we're looking at uh, 20 years from now. Uh, so uh, whatever is, is most efficient out there, you can uh, imagine that and uh, you can also imagine how much money is going into develop it, developing this. And I, I truly see a great, uh, great future for the solar panels. It's really uh, the way to go. They are doing research about how to integrate this into paint, into, into glass, into anything you can, just to get a big area uh, as possible to, to charge, uh, charge your cars or, or, or houses or anything, really. 
Okay, we have a, a question for Earl now. Um, the question is, how has the, how has the course evolved uh, since you won the award uh, in 1998? Well, uh, in 1998, the, the, the computer was invented and we were using it. <laughs> so, so nothing's changed there. But the, the level and the depth of detail which the students go into and very multi-layered uh, models which they make. Um, I mean, we, there were see-through models back then, but there, there's just kind of a whole other level in terms of animation and visualization. Uh, that That's kind of changed sort of the, the quality and the detail of what gets presented. However, the thinking, the, level, the depth of thinking is still the same, but the students today have, have different sociological and environmental issues to consider in terms of their thinking. So um, it's good to see that's changed because it shows that the course is being relevant to the current needs and social trends and, and issues. So it, it, it's developing in a, in a good way, not a negative way at all. So yeah, it's very, very in, impressive. Okay, a question for Raquel now. The question is, um, what uh, what influence did um, having the commendation have on what you did next in your career? Uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, well, uh, whatever recon recognition we can get, it's uh, so helpful. So at the time that you are in an interview and you have um, some recognition, you can refer to it, and it's like to have one one more point. So actually. Uh, I'm so happy I, I could get this recognition and it's helpful for I guess all the students at this point where they try to okay look their uh, find their place at the industry. Thank you, Raquel. Okay, um, a question here um, in terms of. How much time did the students have to work on the concepts, and how many uh, how many participants? And was was there an engineering requirement or constraint to the students needed uh, in terms of their design? Well, considering the time, how much time we spent uh, on the project. Uh, Usually it's uh, called a year project, a final year project. Uh, this year, however, we, it was a half year project, so we started around Christmas. And uh, working on uh, concepts, variations of designs, and, and obviously you have to refine this and then go into uh, building a more physical shape, and uh, from that on, uh, finalizing your, your project and design. And David, you want to? Okay, we have a, a question now for David. Uh, what role do you think the glazing will play in the future of automotive design? Okay. Um, I think automotive glazing is, is a very interesting uh, aspect of vehicle design in the future because we are very limited and restricted in the use of other materials uh, by legislation. Um, there's a great number of, of other materials which could be used, um, but the safety issues are so high that there's still certain areas on the car, especially in the front and the sides, where we have to use glass. Um, and it's, it's worth looking into glass and future ways to manufacture and work with glass to improve the design and um, cause it is by legislation, it's a, a, a part of the car. Can I add a little bit to this? Yeah. For my part in this, I, I also feel that, that glass is, I guess, fundamental. Glass has always been used in car designs from the very beginning. Um, and as you can see in architecture, glass is used to give the impression of lightness and transparency. And if we can use glass in car design in a structural way and get glass to work as a structural element, it's possible to still use it. And you can see the trend that's happening. There is more and more and more glazed areas coming out in the cars today. 
it, it's being used in unusual ways. So there, there's definitely uh, a future in, in the use of glass. Um, it's just to do it in a way that it's uh, practical uh, and also lightweight. So obviously the glass manufacturers, Bilkington have to work really hard to get the glass to, to, to work. And uh, the designers have to work hard to use it to its best. Thank you, David. I'm David. Uh, the, n the next question we have is, um, as both Martin and David are currently looking for jobs, uh, are they confident or anxious about finding design jobs in the current market? Uh, are they likely to be uh, more opportunities in China and India than in the US or Europe? Um, obviously, we've just finishing our master's degree and presenting our um, final year projects today, we are both um, looking for jobs and, and places to work in the future. Um, but I think we are both very, very confident uh, um, about our future prospects as DRCA was a very good experience in the last two years and gave us what we need to hopefully succeed in future um, in car industry. And um, obviously we are pretty open um, to go anywhere in the world and with, with markets like China and India, which are big future markets with big possibilities and fast developing, um, being a big uh, um, competitor to the European and US market, there might certainly be some interesting uh, opportunities um, in China or India. But um, obviously also very interesting for us to work in the US and Europe, especially with uh, slowly coming over the the recession, which was much worse last year, and companies actually start hiring again, is um, a very interesting time for us. Um, so as a, a studio designer, I work in a, sort of a medium-sized OEM, Jaguar Land Rover. Um, we're, we're, we've hired, and, uh, there, there was a freeze on hiring for a while while the recession really bit. In. But even then, in the heart of it, we, we still managed to take a couple of guys on, and we're we're, we're currently we're hiring um, maybe uh, only a few months ago, sifting through applications. So, at the end of the day, I've always felt that um, recession or no recession, if you are good enough, um, you, you'll get noticed, and there's opportunities. There are always opportunities for the for the best designers. So, I wouldn't want, wouldn't think that these are two two young guys sh should be anxious at all. Um, uh, there's a studio opportunities available for them in various parts of the world. And I, I'm not too sure whether at the actual um, location is such such an issue. Um, I think all the markets are gradually coming out some at a quicker rate than others of recession. And um, yeah, I'm sure there's a good bright future for both those guys. Thank you, Al. Uh, we have a, another question for the students. Um, it relates to the sustainability or green design for transportation, uh, which is a very popular trend at the moment. Uh, the question is, do they think that, or how much impact can changing to low energy vehicles have on the environment? Uh, Martin speaking. Uh, I think we've come to a point where thinking green and ecology uh, about the environment is just as uh, you have to incorporate that in every project, just like you think about ergonomics and aerodynamics, it's just something that needs to be part of it no matter what you plan to do, uh, so, which is a very good thing, and I think uh, we'll see more of that in the, in the future. And I don't, I, obviously it's a big trend, uh, but I think it, it's not a trend that will die out. I think we'll see it will be, uh, it's a change that will continue and become the normal within uh, designing, uh, at least I hope. That's the reason. Um. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. David, would you like to add anything to those comments? I think I can say something else. Um, I think, obviously, it is a very, very slow process with, with the industry and all the system behind it moving very, very slowly and changing very slow. It's not only um, it's the designers and the industry which has to change. The reason why we're thinking so far ahead is that we have to have the user adjusting their thinking as well as to the, 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 nat the nature of our future products. 
and um, how they're going to be sustainable and how they're going to be used. And that's something that has to change first. And then with this, the, the government and legislation has to change to actually give us the opportunity to get something moving, which is a very slow process. But I certainly think it's going to happen and has to happen in the future. Thank you, David. Uh, that's all the questions we have time for today. Um, but thank you very much to everybody who has joined. Um, and um, speak to you again hopefully next year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude the conference call for today. We thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect. Have a good day.